Hey guys, Matt here from audiotechno.com. Today I'm at the Maker Fair in Adelaide, Australia. This is the central hub for innovation, technology and entrepreneurship. Let's have a look and see what people are up to. Today I went to the Maker Fair and I was quite impressed with what I saw. There was plenty of talent and interesting innovative products. Technology on display ranged from robotics, computing, virtual reality, gaming, 3D printing, music, art, and much, much more. Um, 3D printers have really taken off in the last few years. It really is becoming a standard and it wouldn't surprise me if in a few years kids are saying things like, I can't believe you only have a 2D printer. Basically at the SMS we have like resources such as 3D printers and laser cut and like in class we get time to like make them and make design things that we want to design to like solve problems or just for fun and then we get to like make them by using like a laser cutter or a 3D printer. Yeah, that's about it. Now this really caught my eye. Growing up in the era of fourth generation 16-bit gaming, I felt nothing but nostalgia. A Super Nintendo controller connecting via Bluetooth to a smartphone or computer. How cool. And this was even more interesting. A digital ROM emulation of classic retro games. These games are run on a Raspberry Pi and controlled by Makey Makey. Now you might be thinking, a Raspberry Pi? Well, it's not this. Actually, it's this. A Raspberry Pi is a tiny single board computer made by a company in the UK. So you can load software on this tiny computer. In this example, it's a retro gaming ROM. A Makey Makey is a product that allows you to turn everyday objects, in this case fruit, into touchpads. So you're able to control the game using fruit as a controller. Pretty cool, hey? Uh, Raspberry Pi here, so that's running a retro Pi system with your game emulation. So it's running a demo of Mario at the moment because no one's playing it. <laughs> um, and it's awesome. It's super good. Retro Pi's free operating system. 50, 60 different emulators, and then we've got a Makey Makey board here. Uh, so it connects via USB to the Raspberry Pi, and it acts like a keyboard. It works straight away, you don't have to install any drivers, you don't have to code anything, yeah. and uh, you can play Mario with fruit. You can <laughs> play Mario with watermelons, with buckets of water, with even draw controllers, so we can hit, uh, hit start, and you can see right away, do you want to have a, have a turn? So you've got left, right, jump there, Jump, you can uh oh no we hit a bad guy. That's right, you've got two more lives left. Uh, so any vintage game it'll emulate it and you can hook up as many different controls as you want. So does it actually use the original cartridge ROM like for No no, so it uses a digital ROM. These are some of the games that we bought. Yeah yeah yeah. Um and it depends on your interpretation of the license okay. of the game, but we've only got the games loaded up that we've actually bought the cartridges for. You yeah, know, respect intellectual property. Um, but it just uses a digital ROM that you can download yeah. online. Um, but yeah, it's great. I love it, it's very fun. Very, very cool. Next, I had a look at Body Music, 
basically a synthesizer using your body to make sound. Hey, what can you tell us about this uh, piece of technology here? Uh, yeah, so this is a uh, just a, an inverter circuit, uh, and it's a resistor capacitor network. And you, but you're acting as the resistor, to, and the amount of resistance you provide changes how quickly that inverter oscillates, and so it changes the frequency that you get up. Cool. And that's pretty much the, the simplest oscillator that you can make. And then, is there like where does it go through to the amp? All right. So yeah, the output's coming in here. It's sort of this is a little. Uh, maybe a diode mixer. Oh, there's capacitors. It's a different way of mixing. It mixes the three circuits together in the simplest way possible and then just goes into these powered speakers. Cool. So the amplifiers inside the speakers. Thanks so much. No problems. There's no doubt that drones are growing in popularity like crazy. I had a look at some at DroneX Labs. <laughs> hey guys, I'm here with Jack from DroneX Labs. How are you today? I'm very good, thanks. Man. Cool. Uh, what can you tell me about these drones? Uh, how long have you been doing this for? Well, originally I started flying helicopters about 10 years ago. Oh yeah. So I've been in it for a long time. I started about a year ago flying drones. Yeah. When they started to come from out of the underground, start poking out into the real world kind of thing. Yeah. It seems that like drones are becoming just more and more popular now with just in general. It's just become almost like a boom. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there it is. Where do you see the future of what's going to be happening in the next five, ten years? Oh, I, it, I see it like a Formula One league. It's just going to be very similar to Formula One, but flying. Awesome. Sounds awesome. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Next up was this custom-built electric car from the Australian Electric Vehicle Association. This car was stripped of its engine and replaced with an electric motor. Very impressive. Of course, no fair isn't complete without something a little crazy. Meet Claude Woodward, the sonic manipulator. This first device is a small MIDI controller and is controlling parameters using dials, breath control and a piezoelectric mic. And this is a giant MIDI controller. The dials are all MIDI mapped to specific parameters. The actual synth that Claude is playing is the ES2, a synth in Logic. He is running Mainstage on a Mac Mini. Mainstage is Apple's performance application, whereas Logic is really just for producing. It's a bit hard to see, but Claude is using several Arduino circuit boards to send the MIDI data. An Arduino is very similar to a Raspberry Pi. It is a single board microcontroller. The main difference is that an Arduino is open source, so you can do more with it. As well as knobs to send the MIDI data, there's also a foot controller which Claude has mapped to filter cutoff and volume. He has also custom built the keys to include vibrato. Now I have to say, this guy does remind me of someone. If you want to learn more about Makerfair, go to makerfair.com. 
and you can see when the next one is in your country. I also encourage you to check out curiositybot.com. Two of my friends who I studied with at Berklee College of Music have started their own makers lab in Valencia, Spain. They run workshops on topics dealing with music and sound and interactivity using little bits, Arduino, Makey Makey and more. I'll put a link in the description so you can check it out. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. And if you really enjoyed this video, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. As always, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next one.